So what I love about the Pythagorean theorem after you've had Algebra 1 is that we can really get into working with this, this theorem, this formula, with algebra, using some of the things that we learned about squaring binomials and all sorts of fun stuff. So quadratics. So here we are. We're going to start with an easy one on the left. On the left, it's just going to ease us in into what the Pythagorean theorem is, but then the one on the right, that's where we're going to really use our Algebra 1 skills. So on the left-hand side, I've got a leg that has a length of 7, a leg that has a length of 3, and then the hypotenuse, which is a length of x. And Pythagorean theorem says you take the leg, square it, plus the other leg, square it, equals the hypotenuse squared. So I'm just going to plug values in. So I've got one leg is 3, so 3 squared. The other leg is 7, so that's 7 squared. And the hypotenuse is x, so that's x squared. So that gives us 9 plus 49 equals x squared. 9 plus 49 is 58. We don't want to solve for x squared, we want to solve for x. So that's where we use the square root property. So we're going to square root both sides. Now normally when we square root both sides, we get a plus or minus. However, x represents a length and lengths are not negative. So we're just going to deal with the positive square root of 58. I'm going to take 58 and I'm going to go off to the side real quick and make sure that it doesn't break down. I need to make sure that we don't have a perfect square in there. So 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 left over. 2 goes into 18 9 times. Well, 2 is prime. 29 is prime. That means neither one of those is going to break down. So I have no pairs, no perfect square. Therefore, x is equal to the square root of 58 in its most simplified form. Okay, let's try this again. On the right, we're going to have one of the legs is x, so we'll have x squared. The other leg is x plus 2, so we're going to take that binomial and square it. And that's going to equal 10 squared, and 10 squared is 100. So I have x squared plus, now some of you might be thinking this is x squared plus 4, but it's not. Remember from Algebra 2, x plus 2 quantity squared is x plus 2 times x plus 2. And that foils out to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to add the 2x squareds. Oh, look at that. An x squared and an x squared is 2x squareds. I'm going to add the 2x squareds to get 2x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 100. We're going to subtract 100. So I have 2x squared plus 4x minus 96 equals 0. I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor. And now I'm going to factor my quadratic. So I've got x, hmm, 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 hmm. What two numbers multiply? What two numbers multiply to be 48, negative 48, but add to be 2x? Well, that would be that would be a positive 8 and a negative 6. So I've got x minus 6. So I've got two answers. x equals negative 8 or x equals 6. Well, x can't equal negative 8 because negative 8 can't be a side length. So x cannot equal negative 8. Therefore, the value of x is only 6. That would give me a 6 right here, and a 6 plus 2 would, is 8, and I can check my answer. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 10 squared, and that's a true story. 36 plus 64 is indeed equal to 100. So our answer is x equals 6. And those are some two good examples of using our Pythagorean theorem with algebra. Now in the next video, we're going to do some exercises here. So we're going to 
do some of the classroom exercises uh, that provide us an opportunity to get a little bit more practice and make sure that we really understand the Pythagorean theorem.